name is Steve Stevens, the best sports consultant money can buy. I make more money betting sports than anybody in the world. I'm the one that tells you who to bet. I'm not a bookie. I'm the bookie killer. If money talks, then I got a lot to say. I'm on the grind trying to make a hundred thousand dollars a day. The game that I pick, believe me, it's a winner. What I know could get you rich, cause all I pick is winners. Welcome to Lost Bay. Money talks, money talks. Welcome to Lost Bay. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're tuned into the VIP Sports Podcast. I'm Darren Notero, a.k.a. Steve Stevens, the bookie killer. Sit here with my ride-along host, the paparazzi. What's popping? Well, I have to stop the show here for a second, and a lot of people are going to laugh. They're going to say it's not a real sport, but I have to congratulate our Las Vegas Aces as they made it to the WNBA Finals for the first time in franchise history last night, defeating uh, the Seattle, uh, I can't remember, the Seattle Storm. And ending Sue Bird's uh, career last night. She's one of the best players of all time. But our aces are in the finals. They're going to win the championship? They are going to win the championship. The uh, finals, though, ridiculously start on Sunday during NFL football. So a fan like me is not going to be able to go to game one. Game two is on Tuesday night. I'll be there. But I can't miss football, you know, in order to go to the aces game. Well, I, I don't think you'll be the only one missing that game during football. That'll probably be the most least viewed sport on television. Yeah, I, I have no idea why the executives would put that game right up against opening day football. But, uh, I, again, I just want to give a shout-out to the Aces. Congratulations, Asia Wilson and the girls did a hell of a job last night. Let's get it done. Anyway, guys, today, September 7th, podcast number 369. Show sponsored by our boys over there at Blue Chew, the money team. And like I said, we got a great show for you today. Quick college football. Uh, Number 10, USC, has been the most talked about team heading into week number two. USC went from plus 2,000 to plus 1,600 to win the national championship after beating up on Rice 61-14 in week one. Is beating up on Rice all that big of an accomplishment? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think uh, that that makes you a favorite by any means, Uh, but they did play good football. Do you think they win the national championship? Uh, Absolutely not. I do not think that USC is going to win the national championship this year. I I don't either. This week, USC is on the road at Stanford at the farm. USC is minus nine with a 67-point total. Here's the question. How impressed are you with the transfer from Oklahoma quarterback Khalid Williams? Well, again, we're playing Rice. It's week one. He played a very good game. But uh, you've got to face some of the bigger teams here. Do I think Caleb Williams is going to go do that against Georgia's defense? Not no, but as you say, fuck no. You want to talk about who's impressed with a quarterback. Georgia's quarterback impressed the shit out of me as well. Got the job done covered easily. Yes, yeah, Stenton Benson, uh, returning uh, national championship quarterback, he played very well against Oregon. Now, you, we, you said that they won't win the championship. Is USC the only team in the West Coast that has a chance of making the college football playoffs? I mean, it's early. We've seen uh, a couple of weeks of football. A lot of teams have only played one game. But, uh, again, do I see a team from the West Coast being able to go dominate Alabama or Georgia or Clemson? Absolutely not. So you're saying they're not the only West Coast team that can make a run towards the playoffs? They're not the only team who can make a run towards the playoffs, but can they go and beat these SEC teams? In my opinion, no. Uh, yes, they can. So we'll All have right. to wait we'll, and we'll, see. We'll see on that. You guys want to get a hold of us, 877-220-6540. Go to our website, VIPSportsLasVegas.com. Put your number in to our website, and we'll get back with you with a free pick. Understand this. If you guys get a free pick, it's an action play. Don't think you're getting one of my personal plays that you see my record, you know, 39 and fucking six. Uh, It's not happening. So those people that are looking for the big boy personal plays, make sure you shine up. Shine up? Yeah. I guess you will shine up if you get on them personals. Sign up and take advantage of it so we can help you get paid. More importantly, though, if you take the time to put your phone number in, have a five-minute conversation with one of the salesmen so they can explain to you why Steve wins, why it's important, and be honest about what you're betting on a bankroll so they can put you on the plays that you should be on to make you money. That's the most important part. Uh, I would have to say more than that is to teach you how to sports bet the correct way more than a sales pitch. Yes. Money management, discipline. Uh, When you call a guy, what do you bet? Depends how I feel. No offense, you don't know shit. Feelings have no place in sports betting. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at VIP Sports LV. If you don't want to call, direct message me about doing business, and you'll hear back from me immediately. We will not DM or spam about contests or promotions. So if you get contacted by an account with my picture or my family's picture, 
Make sure you look for that blue check for your own safety to know that it's me. Last time we did a giveaway, we had five fake accounts. We had to shut down people acting like they were us. Find something else to do with your time, guys. It's a fucking joke. Subscribe to the podcast on YouTube or wherever you listen to any of your podcasts. Click the bell on YouTube to receive notifications on all videos we post. We greatly appreciate your thumbs up, and we do read all of your comments. And, and for you guys who have been putting in comments, uh, like uh, Rude Jude has been asking for the shame on you comment, uh, shame on you segment, we will be bringing that back. So we are reading the comments, and we definitely will put that uh, into play for you guys. I want to give a shout out to all the troops, all the active and inactive military. We appreciate everything you do for our country. If you are a military man, DM us. We'll give you a free pick. We appreciate every single thing you do. It's because of you guys that allows us to live a phenomenal life. Right into boxing, Jake Paul, the YouTuber turned prize fighter, will meet former UFC middleweight champion Anderson Silva in a boxing match on October 29th in Phoenix, Arizona. Anderson Silva is 47 years old. He had two boxing matches in 2021, and he won them both. Every so-called expert from MMA to boxing has said that Jake Paul will never fight Anderson Silva and that Jake Paul will lose to Anderson Silva. Here's the question. Will this be the toughest opponent Paul has faced so far? Absolutely. The, the Anderson Silva is a beast. I mean, if I recall, he had a very gruesome injury, broke his leg, his last UFC fight that we saw. But the only edge Jake will have here is his age, the fact that Anderson Silva's up in age of 47. But now you're dealing with somebody who's real, and I mean real, real. And we're going to see how much Jake Paul can really go into a match like this. Do I think Jake Paul has 0% chance? No. The guy has actually been impressive in his fights, but now he's going up against somebody who's the real deal. Do I think Jake Paul will come out a winner? Absolutely not. I don't know. Like I said, he's proved me wrong several times. The guy has a lot of fucking power, and he's yet to fight real boxers. So we're going to have to wait and see. Boxing, MMA, boxing, UFC, two different things. Correct. You've always, you've all, and you've always said that. Uh, there's no question about it. I mean, we've seen people many times that are tough guys get in the boxing ring and get their fucking ass whooped with a professional fucking fight. Well, we saw so, it with Conor McGregor. And, and, and hold on. No hating on MMA or UFC. And the roles are reversed. Right. If Floyd were to fight Conor McGregor in the octagon with no gloves, it lights out. Right. I mean, that's just all there is to it. But you took the best UFC fighter, got in the boxing ring. He didn't have a fucking chance. Right. Plain and fucking simple. Two different sports. Anyway, guys, let's get right into NFL Week 1. Who's that brought to us by, Poppy? Well, we're so happy to have NFL Week 1, and it is brought to us by my favorite company, Blue Chew. Well, guys, fall is almost here, and we all could use a stiff breeze. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, confidence can take you far in life. It can also help you in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. Well, that's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable tablet and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them any day, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, and one of their licensed medical providers will contact you. Once you're approved, you'll be, you will receive your prescription within days. The best part? It's all done online. So no visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at that pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Well, like I said, it's time to get off the couch and back to work. If your tool needs an upgrade, head to BlueChew.com. Guys, there's nothing sexier than confidence, and Blue Chew can give you help where it counts. Uh, call into action, like I said. We've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when using our promotional code VIP at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com promotional code VIP to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. We do thank BlueChew for sponsoring our podcast. Now, uh, we do want to give a shout out. I, it's similar to the shame on you section, but I labeled it as the dumbest wannabe handicapper of all time. Well, I mean, that would take you years to sit here and put that. No, this guy tops the cake. Oh. I want to give a shout out to little dick William Smith. Again. You have to honestly be the dumbest motherfucker I have ever met in my life. You got the FBI investigating you. You got the IRS investigating you. So what do you do? You pay to put yourself on a billboard right in front of the Las Vegas Strip, copying what Vegas Dave did. By the way, he got no money off the billboard. You just want people to know you, but no one will ever fucking know you. You got to be literally 
the dumbest motherfucker yeah. I've ever met. And for that, shame on you, little Dick Willie. A guy that's being investigated by the feds, has no business license, hasn't had a tax return in fucking 14 years, and you pay, you want to see yourself so bad that you pay <laughs> to go on a sign? Bro, you are literally labeled as the dumbest fucking wannabe handicapper in the world. And you don't think maybe the investigators uh, might take offense to that, that this guy, instead of laying low, maybe starting to do things maybe right. Maybe hire an attorney, go do some back taxes, try to fucking uh, get a business license as quick as you can instead, and defend yourself. Instead, he puts himself on a fucking billboard <laughs> on the Las Vegas Strip. That, that, that's the way he thinks of dealing with it. Hands down, the dumbest motherfucker in the world. Boy, when MIRS agents are peeling your shit out your garage, it is not a good feeling. Yeah. Uh, uh, man, Willie, I don't know what's wrong with you, my man. Right when you think oh. he's the dumbest motherfucker in the world, he gets dumber, doesn't he? Yeah. No street game at all. Square is a fucking box. Is he gonna is he gonna post some of those pictures with him with the transvestite? I don't know. I've been waiting to see him. Like I said, if not, we can. We yeah. got plenty of them. Yeah. Anybody and anybody who wants to see those pictures instead of the one on the billboard, all I gotta do is ask <laughs> Steve Stevens. <laughs> oh my God. And not to mention, ninety five percent of our business is not in Las Vegas. Correct. So, I mean, like I said, stupidest motherfucker in the world. Yeah. We got some great games to watch in week one, including the Raiders getting three points at the Chargers and the Cowboys getting two points at home against Tampa Bay. Uh, I don't see Dallas doing much this year. I do see Dak coming out, getting the job done. But uh, to you Dallas fans, I think you're going to be real disappointed this well, season. Well, I, I would never count on Mike McCarthy to run fucking anything. I wouldn't count on Mike McCarthy to run an ice cream stand or a lemonade stand. Exactly. Here's my question, Poppy. How pumped up are, are everybody in your hometown out here in Vegas? Not your hometown, my hometown, the Raiders squad. And do the Raiders have a pretty good chance to make the playoffs in this very difficult AFC West division with the Chief Chargers, the Broncos, and with Russell Wilson playing for the Broncos? Well, if I recall, you have a producer bet with uh, Ethan over there. He said the, they'll be last in their division. I'll, I'll bet anybody that wants yeah. to take that bet that that ain't happening. Now, in all truth, we do have a very tough division. It may be the toughest division in football. However, the Raiders have upgraded in talent. We have a good coach. And uh, this town is absolutely going nuts for the Raiders. I think this town will support the Raiders to the end. And I think everybody is pumped up for this game. I know I am. So let me answer that. The Vegas fans are pumped the fuck up. Everybody's excited. And we're going to Allegiant Stadium willing to bang and whatever it takes to get the job done. And yes, we do support our Raiders. Now they start off the season 0-4. We'll never go to another fucking game, period. Yeah. So let's make sure we have a good season and let's go the, kick the some fucking The tone of this ass. podcast will be a lot different if that happens. <laughs> Here's a stat. Week one, there are 10 home underdogs. The most such games in an opening week since the NFL moved to a 16-game schedule in 1978. You know, growing up, my father always told me, take home dogs. And uh, the this NFL. This would definitely be the week. Yeah. And the NFL, it is very hard to go on the road. Let me say that. Uh, a lot of these games will probably be close. And, you know, there are a lot of games in college here. First week, 17-point favorites like Ohio State that got a game from Notre Dame. Week one, it's hard to go in there with big spreads, hard to go travel on the road. So I would be very, very careful to take a ton of road favorites. Don't forget the sports books are going off last year's power rankings, mm -hmm. last year's lines, and they're smart as a motherfucker. They're going to be trapping people left and right. Yeah. So for you guys out there taking all those favorites on the road, good luck to you is all I can fucking tell you. Hot week one NFL trends. Thursday night, awesome opener. Bills minus two and a half with a 50-point total for the first time since 1991 and 1992. The Jim Kelly days. The Bills enter the regular season as the favorite to win the Super Bowl at plus 600. I love the Bills. Always have. And they are going to make us a lot of fucking money this year. However, the trend. Rams are just the sixth Super Bowl champion to be listed as an underdog in week one of the following season. Is that a slap in the fucking face? I mean, it is a slap in the fucking face, but you got to go off the talent. And uh, the Rams are missing a couple of key players that helped them get there last year. And I think uh, the Bills are on uh, a major, major mission this year. Well, they should be after get fucking fucking around at the end of last year and the year before. Yeah. Result, the previous five such teams were 4-1 and one straight up and against the spread in their opener. I think minds will want to know who to play in this game. I think people will have a, a quick thought in their mind, hey, I want to play this. But I think if people are smart, you may be using the total on the game. And if they want to watch and make money right off the bat, they should call 877-220-654. No doubt. Ravens minus seven at the Jets, 44.5 point total. Here's the trend. 
Ravens are 32 and 12 straight up, 28 and 15 against the spread under John Harbaugh. With at least 10 days to prepare for a game, including week one, I love the Ravens in that game. Yeah, the Jets, you don't even know who's playing quarterback. Uh, Zach Wilson is possibly going to come back. He may still need a week or two. So uh, they're unsure of who they're going to use. You've got the Ravens who always come up fired. Lamar Jackson, as you pointed out, put on another 20, 25 pounds and looks like an He's a fucking monster. Beast. If he can still run the way he did, boy, he's going to be stiff-arming and laying motherfuckers down. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think Baltimore can easily go in there and cover this spread. Uh, the Jets still have a lot of uh, climbing to do. Eagles minus four at the Lions with a 48 and a half total. Here's the trend. Lions quarterback Jared Goff is a perfect 5-0 and against the spread in week one in his entire NFL career, covering the spread by 10 points per game. Well, this is another one of those uh, home dogs. Listen, guys, I I've grown up in Detroit, and I've, I've kind of realized the Lions are never going to win a Super Bowl in my entire life, so I've accepted that. However, uh, they've been on hard knocks, the Lions. You've seen a lot of coverage about them. Jared Goff has been rumored to have an absolute awesome camp to be on fire. So giving the Lions four at home in week one may be a tricky game. Uh, I don't know if he's going to have a play on it or not, but I would definitely call him to get his plays for the weekend. That might be one of your underdogs. Colts minus seven at the Texans with a 46 uh, over under total. Texans are the biggest underdog in week one. Plus eight and a half. The but here's a big trend that's coming up. Yeah, since 2008, the Colts are one and 12 against the spread in week one. <laughs> yeah. One and 12 against the spread in week one. The trend in the last 15 years, five teams have been underdogs by more than a touchdown at home in week one. They are 0 and 5 straight up, but 5 and 0 against the spread. So they lose, but they cover. Because these teams in the NFL are getting a lot of points. This isn't college, this is pro. You've got pro athletes, and it's hard, especially in week one, to give guys uh, that many points, double-digit points in the NFL. A few big games on Sunday. Raiders plus three at Chargers. Bucks minus two at Cowboys Sunday night. Then you got Monday night football. You've got the Denver Broncos minus six and a half at the Seattle Seahawks. Russell Wilson will take on his old team. Here's the trend. In the last 50 Monday night football games in week one since 1998, underdogs are 27 and 12 against the spread, almost 70%. Well, this will be a home favorite. Uh, do you think, obviously, you're playing your old team that you've been there for your whole career, you won championships with. Do you think Russell Wilson comes out with anger versus his old team uh, as motivation, or is he more motivated for this is a new step in my career with the Broncos? I want to start it off right. Well, he's a borderline gump, so I don't even think he has anger in him uh, to be that rah, rah, rah quarterback to start with. I don't like Russell Wilson. Don't dislike him. His game is average. He doesn't impress me. And uh, could he be a key access fucking key fucking role in fucking Denver? Absolutely. They can do some fucking damage. We're going to have to wait and see. But he doesn't, he doesn't, Raw, he's not one of those raw, raw quarterbacks at all. Uh, versus Derek Carr uh, doesn't have all the talent in the world, but he does have that ambition to get angry and excited and go out there to do what he can do. But combo, composed quarterbacks will win every fucking That was going to be my next question. Now, the Raiders and Denver are in the same division. Uh, you have your little bet there with Ethan over there. Uh, do you see the Raiders having a better record than Denver or Denver having a better record than the Raiders? It's going to be very fucking close, but I'm going to put Raiders on top of that. TMZ story, a woman named Courtney Tillia, a former school teacher turned OnlyFans model, claims she has hit and became a millionaire status after ditching the classroom to focus on her pussy lips, her titties, and her explicit online content. Courtney told TMZ she racked up more than $1 million between her three OnlyFans accounts and a little bit more than three years. She moved her husband and her four kids to L.A. from Arizona, They've been able to enjoy family vacations to Hawaii and Nashville. Correct. But has she told the husband that she's selling pussy as well? That's, yeah, that's, that, that's where a lot of that extra cash is coming from as well. You know, She says she also donates money to homeless shelters around Los Angeles. Here's the question. Is it true that some women are making big, big money on OnlyFans? Absolutely. 100%. Sex sells. Where the fuck have you been? Yeah. We had a girl sitting right here on our podcast with her titties out every fucking day, every episode. We'd have millions of followers and making millions off our podcast as well. Yeah, guys, in today's, uh, today's world where we have uh, Instagram and OnlyFans and everything on the computer, it's big business. And when you're a good-looking woman... Yes, you can go create your own business. I have celebrity, friend, uh, celebrity friends that have OnlyFans accounts. 
that they make money. But yes, if you do it the right way and do it like this lady seems to, 100% you can be a millionaire. Plus, it's a fantasy. You got a school teacher with her glasses on, her little stockings up. Nine out of ten guys at home jerking on their dick. They're going to call. They're, they're, they're going to subscribe immediately. Now, not to get too personal, but uh, do you ever play role model, with, like role play with Kelly, make her get up in outfits like that? Nah, we have in the past, but uh, nothing, anything recently. Nah, we're just no. trying to get it, get everything back online. But we're down. That's for fucking sure. Yeah, well, I've, I'm I've, down to do it all. I've heard stories in the past, so I yeah, know some of the crazy stuff. Lately, but. nah, hell no. The kids and all that shit. And it's some, just, just vanilla now? Yeah, just vanilla. But we'll, we'll turn it into a swirl here real soon. We're going to see another sizzle tape? Abs of motherfucker. All lovely. right, sizzle, sizzle tape 10 years later. <laughs> <laughs> NCAA football week number two. Recap, number two, Georgia pounded Oregon 49-3, to which we knew Oregon every year, last year, this year, they, they, they pump them up. Oregon ain't shit. I would agree with that. Oregon I would 100% agree shit, with that man. after that. First that game. is not a team to bet big money on ever. No. I remember I got killed on them last year when we were filming Million Dollar Weekend. Had two hundred thousand on them, sorry bastards. Absolute blowout losers. Yeah. Well, they have they have transfer quarterback Bo Nix who came from Auburn, and uh, you know they built it up. Oh, he's going to be a great quarterback. This is going to be a great game against Georgia. He got picked off, turned the ball over nonstop. Georgia's fucking defense is for real. Anybody who thought, hey, they lost the starters, like we told you last week, their backups are guys that are going to the NFL. Georgia's defense looked fucking awesome, and they're definitely still a team to be reckoned with. Here's a question. You ever seen a college team with bigger and badder tight ends than Georgia has right now? No. Never. Like you said, they got two NFL fucking tight ends ready to go. They have their star tight end, Brock Bowers, and the six foot seven inch monster, Darnell Washington, that was leaping over motherfuckers and running over Oregon defenders last week like it was nothing. Yeah, people don't understand. You get a guy who's 6'7", 240, 250 running at you, go try to tackle him. Yeah, it ain't that, happening. That, that, that's why the little Oregon Ducks fucking secondary trying to tackle these guys, they were running right over them. Good luck trying to tackle these guys. Why do you think Henry's been, been so successful in his fucking career? Yeah. Monster mm -hmm. and strong as fuck. Stiff arm out of this world. Recap, the sports better that bet on Utah State to win the national championship. Watch his team get crushed by number one Alabama, who won and covered in a 55 to nothing victory. We told you that you should have ripped that ticket up as soon as you bet it, brother. We, we told him he should have called you because he lost out on the money there to Alabama to watch the game. He probably bet another grand on them to cover. They didn't cover there. All the expenses, bro, you're out five fucking thousand. Hopefully you got laid and fucked up. However, you need to get that money back, and all you have to do is call that guy right there. Not to mention, we've said it millions of times, there's no feelings. You don't bet with your heart when it comes down to sports betting. You bet who has an honest chance of getting you the fucking money. The week number one, Alabama will travel to Austin uh, to play Texas, also covered in week one, beating UL Monroe 52 to 10. Alabama's minus 20, and the total is 64 and a half. Both Alabama and Texas hit the under in week number one. Here's my question. Do you think they will see Alabama quarterback Bryce Young win back-to-back -back Heisman trophies? Very good chance of it. Very possible. No doubt about it. Recap, Notre Dame hung in there for a while, but couldn't get their offense on track. Ohio State won, but did not cover in their 21-10 victory over the Fighting Irish. But they played well. To go into Ohio State and keep that game close to the fourth quarter till finally Ohio State exploded with their offense, Notre Dame did very well. The new coach, first game. I look for Notre Dame to be a good team all year long. Point being, if you're a fighting Irish fan, you're disappointed. But if you're a betting man that bet the Irish, you're happy as fuck. They covered the spread. Correct. Plain you, and fucking You simple. can't give the number five team 17 points in week one. Uh, this week, number three, Ohio State will host Arkansas State. Ohio State is minus 43 and a half with a 68.5 point total. Arkansas State won and covered 58 to three against the Grambling in week one. But this is a much different animal here still 43 and a half points a lot of points i know ohio state has a dominant offense and maybe it didn't get going quite well in week one but 43 and a half points is a big number you ain't lying number eight notre dame will host marshall notre dame is minus 20 and a half with a 51 and a half point total which means they see, on paper they see notre dame dominating the game with marshall not scoring too much i could see that as well i think notre dame uh, will put up a lot of points two good games to watch this weekend are number 20 kentucky at number 12, Florida. Florida is minus five, and the total is 52 and a half. Everyone is very high on Florida's quarterback, Anthony Richardson, after the Gators pulled off the upset over Utah last week in a thrilling game, 29 to 26. The late game on Saturday night, Baylor uh, at number 21, BYU. BYU is three and a half with a 53 and a half point total. Baylor put up 69 points in their win and covered over Albany. 
BYU was giving South Florida 11 points, and they won by 29 in their 50-21 to 21 win and cover in week one. I, I am very much looking forward to that game. I know you've had some early information on that game, and I, I, I know hopefully you're going to have a big play on that game because I'm ready to make money on that one. No fucking doubt. Quick Major League Baseball summary. Albert Pujols is retiring after this season. He currently has three MVP awards and two World Series titles and near to the end of his incredible career. He's just five home runs away from becoming just the fourth member of the 700 home run club, joining Babe Ruth, Hank Aaron, and Barry Bonds. Uh, another thing, quick summary in Major League Baseball, be careful on those favorite run lines right now. This is not the time to be taking favorites on the run line. Now, especially when you're minus one and a half, minus a dollar eighty, minus a dollar ninety. Guys, those are games to stay away from. You can find totals, you can find first fives, but taking those run lines with minus 180, 190, stay away. Cardinals are eight and two in their last ten games. Another home run hitter, Aaron Judge, hit his league leading fifty fourth home run of the season on Monday, but the Yankees are still struggling to score runs. Yankees have scored just ten runs total in their last five games. Result Tampa Bay Rays are now just four and a half games back of the New York Yankees in the American League East. Yankees host the Rays once again, this time in the Bronx this weekend. Rays are 13-3 and three in their last 16 games, by the way. And, and, and they're 10-1 in their last home games. Tampa has really stepped it up. They had a lot of injuries, and uh, like Tampa does uh, every year, they seem to just get in gear. They make the playoffs. They don't go very far in the playoffs, but we talked about how they always play the Yankees tough. I thought the Yankees would wake up last weekend. They really didn't. Tampa kind of dominated them, and uh, the Yankees better be careful because if they get into uh, up two games, three games, and have Tampa coming to town, Tampa could, could take them. They sure could. Under betting stat, the Arizona Diamondbacks pitcher Zach Gallen tied the major league record with a six-consecutive scoreless start on Sunday, leading the Diamondbacks to a 5-1 victory over Milwaukee. Gallen, 11-2, extended his scoreless streak to 41 and third inning, uh, 41 and one third innings. Impressive. Unbelievable. That's very impressive. This weekend in the NL East race, Phillies are hanging on to the second wild card spot and should have an easier series against the Nationals this weekend. The Mets should have an easier series against the Marlins, but the Braves have a tough interleague series against the Seattle Mariners. That the that, that's not tough. Oh, I don't know. The Mariners are fighting for the wild card in the American League. Will they get it? We're going to have to wait and see. Like I said, guys, NFL football is here. College football is in full effect. Major League Baseball is here. You're going to have hockey here before you fucking know it. And basketball. A and NBA basketball and college. Now is the time of the year to just absolutely get paid, and I don't want to see you guys miss out. We're running promotions for all size shapes of sports bettors. Whether you're crawling or balling, we can help you achieve your goals. On the behalf of VIP Sports, myself, the crew, the paparazzi, we love you, and remember one thing. Don't let the players be the only ones that get paid. We'll see you soon. It must be the money talking. It's Steve Stevens. I bust your bookie head open. Split it to the white meat. I ain't joking. Me a dirt bomb in the ghost flow. Straight OG like the kush I be smoking. It's way too potent for rookies to come hit it. A little white girl around, I might sniff it. Popping bub in the club, so twisted. My pops keeps telling me to go get it. So I'm at the sports book, betting big on the Clippers. I'm talking about five figures. I need a few shots of liquor. Might need another zipper if the bomb play me. Fuck around and put a half a meal on Tom Brady. When it comes to betting sports, Steve Stevens a beast. Need a certified winner called VIP Sports. Got too many felonies to ride around with my Glock. So sure to keep it since I got shot in Vegas like Bob. Here and I.